Hello, hello, how are you? I am back again, and today I'm very excited. I am unboxing the brand new Jo Malone perfume. I'm super excited. I have been, I have been eagerly awaiting this perfume, and I've been kind of like trying to avoid reviews, but at the same time, I may have been stalking the Jo Malone website to read all about it. So, yeah, I am ready. I'm ready to share it with you. I'm super excited. I'm already wearing it, but I'm gonna spritz a little bit more. I've got some thoughts, I've got some feelings, I've got some notes, and I'm just super excited to dive into it with you. So here is the box, and I'm gonna open it up. It did actually come with a ribbon on, but I took the ribbon off, and I didn't wanna put the ribbon back on. You know how it is. But anyway, tissue inside. Perfume bottle wasn't upside down originally. I did that. And here it is, a Scarlet Poppy. Hello, hello, how are you? It's very nice to meet you. Anyway, um, I'm super excited to share this with you because I've had a lot of requests for this video and I'm just very excited to dive into it. So I'm already wearing it on this wrist and it's been on for about three hours. Um, so I'm gonna put on this wrist and then this will be newer and fresher and more top notey. So here it is. Oh, I do like it. Um, so I've got some notes. First of all, this perfume, Poppy. I've got this completely wrong. I thought it was called Poppy Intense. It's Scarlet Poppy. I'm talking absolute nonsense. I keep thinking, do you know what? In my head, this perfume is called Poppy Intense. It's not, it's called Scarlet Poppy. It's crazy. Oh, it's so good though. I do like it, but it's unusual. It's different, it's complex, it's kind of, it's interesting. Anyway, let me tell you the top notes for Scarlet Poppy. Why do I think this is called Poppy Intense? Like, I'm, I'm dyslexic, so I do sometimes mix up words, and I think I saw the Poppy and then Cologne Intense, and I just put them together and made up my own name. Anyway, it's called Scarlet Poppy, and it's part of the Cologne Intense range. And you might also notice it's in a very special red bottle, which is very rare for them. So um, yeah, anyway, the top notes are Umbrette, which is quite a powdery, I would say almost quite like a dusty libraries kind of vibe. And then it's got Poppy, which is like a voluptuous floral vibe. And then at the base, it's got Tonka Bean with almond, vanilla, and tobacco accords. And you do get that, but then it's got also extra notes. Like it's got a little bit of heliotrope, which I think is where I kind of get that dusty libraries vibe. It's got a little bit of iris, which is again, quite like, it's part of the violet family, I think. It's like the bulb, I think, I'm not even sure. But it's got that kind of quite earthy, old floral kind of feel. It's quite velvety. And there's also, and it took me ages to pinpoint this, I kept thinking there's something about it which reminds me of Lotus Flower and Fig, which was a fragrance they released a few months ago. And I kept thinking, no, 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 there's no fig in here. And I kept thinking, but I feel like I can smell some fig, but quite an aquatic fig. And then I read the website and I read the full story of the perfume. And lo and behold, there is actually some fig in it, which I didn't expect and it's very subtle and you can only smell it sometimes. And it is quite a watery aquatic fig. There's something quite milky about it, but like you do just occasionally pick up on it. But because it is one of the Clone Intense collections, it is, this perfume's a little bit more mysterious. It's a little bit more exotic and opulent and also a little bit more complex than you might think of Jo Malone being. Like it's not kind of a kind of two, three ingredients which kind of contrast. It's a little bit more rounded and full and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And it's kind of got like, woodsy and earthy notes but it's got a little bit of aquaticness and it's got some florals and it's got some sweetness and it's kind of got this whole big scarlet poppy kind of aromatic warm sensual kind of vibe it's quite carnal like I do think of it as quite a kind of carnal sexy perfume I'm gonna go back to the original one and um yeah it's quite carnal it's quite sexy it's kind of quite animalistic it does kind of have like this really beautiful floral accord, but then it's also got a lot of earthy, powdery notes. There is quite a lot of sweetness in this perfume, more than you normally get with a Jo Malone, but it's quite nice. Um, 
yeah, there's something about it which is quite special and it's not like a young, flirty, sugary sweetness. It's more of a kind of a boozy, chocolatey, prowliney, vanillary, tonkery kind of sweetness. So it, it still feels very mature and very elegant and very, you know, special. It just feels really special, but it is it is sweeter than some of the other Jo Malone perfumes, which at first kind of put me off, but then I just kind of went with it and I just started to kind of enjoy it. So if you are feeling in kind of a mood for something a little bit more kind of like Moorish and almost, almost kind of chocolatey, it's like there's a little bit of like cacao in there, I don't know, there's something just kind of really Moorish and delicious-y. And if you like that kind of like quite sweet, almost prowling knee, but kind of almost, I don't know, it's got that heliotrope, which is kind of almondy and cherryish, but also quite I always want to say dusty but do you know what I mean it's got kind of like a bit of an old library vibe I like that anyway I'm really really rambling on here but um yeah it's kind of unusual it's very colony intensity it is intense it isn't it is complex it's very wearable and quite sweet and earthy and velvety and lovely it's a very textured kind of perfume I was put off by the sweetness, but I don't know, there's just something about it which is kind of quite Moorish and enjoyable and kind of quite luxurious and decadent and just kind of a bit of a people pleaser. Do you know what I mean? Like it's quite people pleasing. It's just quite nice. It reminds me a little bit of the Christmas limited edition, which was the uh, white moss and snowdrop. So if you know that perfume, I would recommend kind of thinking along those kind of lines. It does remind me a tiny bit of Fig and Lotus Flower. I think that's the right name. It maybe gives me a little bit of cardamom and mimosa vibes. There is a little touch of poppy and barley, but it's quite different to poppy and barley. Like my initial thoughts were like, oh, how is it gonna be different to poppy and barley? And actually it's quite different to poppy and barley because it's less cereally, it's less, um, it's less joyful and uplifting and daytimey. This is much more of a kind of sensual evening perfume. Poppy and Barley is a lot more daytimey um, and a lot less sweet as well. It's got a lot more of a cereal, vetiver, earthy, dry kind of vibe, whereas this is a lot more velvety and sweet and sensual. Um, what else? God, I feel like there's so much I wanna say about this perfume. Um, oh, fragrance combining. So you can fragrance combine it with Poppy and Barley to kind of just make it a little bit more like lively and springy. You can also combine it with Myrrh and Tonka, which will kind of make it just almost deeper and darker and smoother and kind of more woodsy and earthy. Maybe take down the sweetness a little bit as well. And then you can also combine it with Honeysuckle and Divana, which will make it a little bit more florally. It will really pimp up those kind of floral poppy notes. Um, yeah, that's kind of it. Like, I feel like I really rambled on a lot. I hope it makes sense, but um, yeah, that's kind of how it makes me feel. It's very carnal, it's very sexual, it's very like sweet, it's very pretty. It is kind of a little bit like Poppy and Barley, but with kind of the flip side, like an eveningy version. It's a lot more rounded and it's a lot more fuller, it's a lot more textured. It's a lot more sensual and evening-y. It's a lot sweeter. It's got a lot more kind of like, I don't know, prowling-y, vanilla-y, kind of rich, Moorish kind of vibes going on. And it is really pretty. It's really pretty. If you like perfumes like um, White Moss and Snowdrop, I think it was called, or Cardamom and Mimosa, or I don't know, what else does it remind me of? What vibes does it give me? I'm not sure. My mind's gone blank. Personally, if I was going to compare it to Poppy and Barley, I think I still prefer Poppy and Barley, but then, like, the Poppy and Barley is much more daytimey. This is much more evening. So if you are kind of quite a daytimey, like, uplifting, friendly, elegant kind of thing, but then if, I don't, I don't know, it's a whole different thing, but this is kind of much more on the evening side. It's like, it's like same flower, different different vibes like one's like a beautiful cultured bouquet of loveliness and then the other one's more of a kind of wild earthy 
field time thing. Do you know what I mean? I hope that makes sense. Um, anyway, that's my video. I think I'm still a Poppy and Barley girl, but this one's so luxurious and indulgent that I'm kind of loving this too, so. Ugh, tough choices, tough choices. This is why we have to wear perfumes every day and we have to mix them up because it's just like different perfumes for every mood and it just brings joy into the life. Joy, life in, I don't know, you know what I'm saying. Do you know what I'm saying? Lockdown is getting to me, guys. Lockdown is making me crazy. Anyway, that's my video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. <laughs>